Nicotinamide mononucleotide, better known as NMN, is a popular anti-aging supplement and studies are finally starting to be conducted on this dietary supplement. In this quick video, I'm going to show you the results and pros and cons of an exercise NMN study, which I think will be particularly interesting if you are a marathon runner or other aerobic athlete. So here is the investigation. Nicotinamide mononucleotide supplementation enhances aerobic capacity in amateur runners, a randomized double-blind study. So what does this investigation look like? Well, we've got 48 runners and they're split into four groups. We've got a placebo group who basically takes cranberry powder and maltodextrin. It's a common type of a carbohydrate you see a lot in different foods, or they're given three different dosages of NMN. We've got a low dose of 300 milligrams a day, a medium dose of 600 milligrams of NMN a day, and then the highest group took 1,200 milligrams a day. They did this once a day for six weeks. They also worked out five to six times a week for 40 to 60 minutes per training session, and training consisted of both running and cycling. Thought that was a little odd since these were runners, but it is what it is. And a little bit more on these runners. Who were they? Well, again, there's 48 of them. They're mostly men. There's a few women, but it's mostly men. They do range in age between 27 and 50 years of age. That's good because we've got younger and older individuals. And what I also liked is that these people had some experience running of between one and five years. In other words, these were not beginners. That's really important because beginners might respond differently than more trained athletes. So I like that. What I also noticed about these people is that they did not use caffeine, they weren't using any medications, and they were not using any dietary supplements either. I thought that was a little interesting since at least most athletes in America, I would, I would imagine, would take at least a multivitamin, but this was a Chinese study. This study occurred in China. Is it possible that maybe Chinese athletes may do things differently than American athletes? It's possible, but on the plus side, however, because they were not taking any dietary supplements, we know there was not any interactions with the NMN supplements. So that's actually kind of good. So what did these researchers find? Well, number one, there was not any effect on body fat or weight loss. These researchers report the combination of exercise and NMN does not change body mass or body composition. They didn't lose weight. They didn't lose fat. And that kind of makes sense because NMN is an anti-aging supplement mostly. It's not marketed as a weight loss supplement or a fat burner supplement. So that kind of makes sense. The other thing they found, and this is kind of interesting, that the combination of NMN and exercise increased ventilatory threshold. Ventilatory threshold is well, basically they're taking more oxygen into their lungs. And this effect, interestingly enough, was dose dependent. The highest dose, 1200 milligrams of NMN, actually worked better than the lowest dose of 300 milligrams. So that's good. But I would also point out something else, and that is this. Their VO2 max, that's their maximum aerobic ability, that did not improve. And also, the other thing they noticed that didn't improve is they're calling it the O2 pulse. I take that to mean oxygen saturation, how much, how much oxygen is in their bloodstreams. And that did not improve either. So the ventilatory threshold increases, but the VO2 max and the oxygen saturation did not. That's actually going to be very important for any athlete watching me because a lot of times it's about, you know, how much your VO2 is improved and does it improve your oxygen saturation. The more oxygen in your blood, the more oxygen you can deliver to your exercising muscles. So that didn't seem to improve, but ventilatory threshold did. One more thing about ventilatory threshold is it is, a, it is associated with an increase in lactic acid concentration in the blood. However, these researchers didn't measure lactic acid during exercise, and that is actually a weakness of the study, in my opinion. Something else they found is that the NMN supplements didn't have any effect on cardiac or heart function in these individuals, and that means it didn't make their hearts work any better, but it also didn't make their hearts work any worse either, and that's actually kind of a good thing, so I'm glad they did point that out. 
And then one other thing I'd point out is they did some fitness tests in these individuals and they found that the NMN supplement had no effect on grip strength. That's a common measure of muscle strength they, attempt, they tend to use in a lab. It's a quick and easy test. Not the best, but it is what it is. So their grip strength did not improve. They could not do any more push-ups which is a measure of muscle endurance. So their muscle endurance didn't appear to improve on the push-ups. And also they weren't more flexible either. The sit and reach test is a measure of hamstring flexibility and that didn't seem to improve as well. One thing they did point out, however, is that interestingly, the 600 milligram dose of NMN, but not the 1200 milligram dose, the 600 milligram dose alone significantly improved single leg standing. They could stand on one leg longer when they took 600 milligrams, but oddly enough, not when they took the 1200 milligrams. So maybe there's a sweet spot through which maybe NMN works and maybe uh, at higher doses it may not do as well as it did. And this may vary from exercise test to exercise test. Again, it's going to take more studies to figure that one out. So pros and cons to this, as I say, number one, I would say big pro, it's a placebo controlled randomized study. That's the best kind of study to do. And I'm glad they did it. It's a six week long study. That's important. That's long enough to see changes in exercise improvement. These runners were not beginners. They had between one and five years of experience with running. And I like that as well. Again, remember beginners may respond differently than more advanced runners. There was no conflict of interest, they pointed out. In other words, these researchers didn't work for any dietary supplement company or pharmaceutical company. They also reported no side effects. That's always good to know. And they also reported that the NMN supplement did raise NAD levels. NAD is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. That's an energy molecule. We needed to make energy. And one of the things that NMN is supposed to do is raise NAD. Declining NAD levels, some say, are associated with aging and aging related diseases. So it's nice that NMN did raise NAD, but they didn't really tell me how much it raised NAD. I did notice that they didn't use the word significant next to NAD. So I'm not sure how much it raised it, but I'm glad it did raise it to some degree. As for cons, mostly guys in this investigation, I would like to see an equal number of men and women because women may respond differently than men. The other thing I'd point out is that they did their uh, exercise testing with cycling, riding a bike. Well, these were runners. Why wouldn't you test them on a treadmill? They didn't do that. And also, what other thing I'd point out, gang, is that they didn't measure. They didn't mention anything about how these runners ran any faster either. Did NMN make them run faster? That's the big thing that runners want to know. Will it help you run faster? Will it improve the time before exhaustion sets in? And I didn't see mention of that in the study. The other thing is that they did not measure lactic acid levels during exercise. That could be an issue, but again, it opens the door for future research. And then the other thing I was a little curious about is what brand of NMN supplements did they use? They didn't mention a brand. Remember, there was no conflict of interest, which means they didn't work for any supplement company or pharmaceutical company, and that's a good thing. That may be why they didn't mention a brand. However, there's a lot of companies that sell nicotinamide mononucleotide supplements, and it would be nice to know if one brand was better than another. Uh, so again, people go back and forth between what's better, you know, NMN versus NR, nicotinamide riboside, right? Well, there's really only one company that makes nicotinamide riboside. There's a bunch of them that make NMN. And so I'm not quite sure what the best company or brand to use is. So again, take that for what it is. So I'm glad to see more human research on NMN supplements, but I remain skeptical. I'm going to link to my other nicotinamide mononucleotide videos in the description so you could check them out for more. But what do you think? Have you tried nicotinamide mononucleotide? If yes, what happened? Leave a comment below. Let me know. Until next time, I'm Joe from supplementclarity.com. Take care.